The Sea Dragon is Subnautica's ultimate hostile creature. As if normal dragons weren't overpowered enough, nature decided letting them breathe underwater and have tentacles was a good idea. But this combo does make the Sea Dragon 45-46B's best chef. With lots of arms and breath like that, you're going to have some well-cooked seafood. Sea Dragon Leviathans live within the volcanic heart of the crater, which sustains all life on this part of 45-46B. Residing within the inactive lava zone and the lava lakes, the Sea Dragon Leviathan's heatproof tissue allows it to withstand the volcanic area's extreme temperatures, and even gives it the ability to eat molten material spewed from the volcano itself and launch it at its prey. The Sea Dragon's body is a cross between a reptile and an octopus, with its front tipped by a short, thick skull and its end by seven long protruding tentacles. The Sea Dragon's head is reptilian in nature and contains four glowing orange eyes with white pupils to hunt down its prey, and the creature's mouth contains a large pink tongue and 32 large teeth which can be seen even when its mouth is closed. The Sea Dragon's snout is tipped by two short protrusions with orange glowing spots, and this is complemented by two small fins beneath its jaw, with its head completed by two fins which rest on the top of its skull. Moving down the creature's body, the Sea Dragon has a large sail-like fin on its back and protective armour plates that run from its neck down the front of its body. This is complemented by two long forearms covered in spines, each ending with webbed four-finger hands, with each finger ending in a claw that is roughly the same size as a human's entire body. Study of a sea dragon leviathan skeleton found in the Lost River shows that the creature has a ball and socket joint arm. This and its front-facing orientation suggests that the creature might be able to pick up objects, while also using its arms like flippers to help it move through the water. The sea dragon's body ends in seven tentacles, each tipped by a small club. Six of these tentacles are smaller and surround a large central tentacle which is the sea dragon's main method of movement. The sea dragon's body is dark green in colour, with a number of purple accents running the length of its body, while its chest and side of its body is covered in bioluminescent spots which continue onto the creature's tentacles. Study of the sea dragon's body reveals that its tissue is made up of one third inanimate materials which likely enter its body through consumption of molten rock and minerals expelled from the volcano. The storing of these materials inside the body is likely what gives the creature its heatproof skin and also makes it immune to the effects of the thermo blade. Not that I'd recommend getting close enough to use it in the first place, that might get you a little bit cooked. Further study of the sea dragon leviathan skeleton found in the Lost River indicates that the creature's reptilian head and inverted rib cage could make it a distant descendant of the gargantuan leviathan, as they both share similar looking skulls and they could both possibly have an inverted rib cage. Although it is possible that the gargantuan leviathan's bones have simply been flipped upside down over time, giving it an inverted look. But the similar look of the sea dragon and the sea emperor leviathan suggests that they share a common ancestor due to their similar body structures and skulls. The sea dragon is Subnautica's largest living hostile creature. Measuring 112 meters long, the creature's size and strength means that almost every other creature on 4546B could find itself as its prey. Although typically sea dragon leviathans feed on crimson rays and lava lizards as adults, and presumably lava larvae, magmarang, and red eye as juveniles within their volcanic home. It's possible that sea dragon's natural food sources have decreased over time, and dwindling food supplies in the inactive lava zone have forced sea dragons to venture into cooler waters in order to find food. This has led to a number of reaper leviathans meeting a rather warm end, with the sea dragon said to corner them and force them into the deeper, hotter water of the lava zone. The reapers are not able to survive such high temperatures, and the water itself ultimately boils them alive. Reaper skeletons have been found within the inactive lava zone and the lost river, which are areas the creature does not typically live, suggesting they have been forced into the area by forces outside of their control. Their bones also show signs of burning and other physical injuries which are consistent with sea dragon attacks. The sea dragon size and the confined caves in which they live suggest that their population numbers are incredibly low, with only three adult sea dragon leviathans known to exist on 4546B today, two of which are located in the inactive lava zone and one in the lava lakes. While this is normal for large creatures who require a lot of food to survive, it's also possible that their numbers have been driven down further by a lack of prey and ultimately starvation. The sea dragon's incredible size could be a result of deep sea gigantism, which suggests that metabolic efficiency increases with size. Some creatures on Earth that have undergone deep sea gigantism can go up to five years without eating, meaning it's possible that sea dragons may only hunt reapers once every few years, with each kill providing enough calories to keep the sea dragon going for a large period of time. The sea dragon's size also gives it extreme power when it comes to ramming and exerting force on its prey. According to data found in the disease research facility, a sea dragon leviathan who had its 
eggs stolen by the architects managed to deal damage in excess of over 300 tons to the facility in which they were stored, ultimately destroying it and releasing Kara into the ecosystem, although this also did kill the sea dragon. Little is known about where sea dragon leviathans nest and reproduce, although this likely takes place somewhere within the lava zone. No sea dragon eggs can be found in the wild, but one can be found within the disease research facility and two smaller eggs can be found in the primary containment facility. It's possible that sea dragons are facing extinction as a species. Sea dragons are a serious threat to humans and their vehicles, and just being close to one will lead to a human or a prawn suit being buffeted due to the amount of water the creature displaces when it moves. If a human is bitten by a sea dragon, it will inflict fatal injuries on the unfortunate victim regardless of their health or if they are wearing a reinforced dive suit. The sea dragon can also place an entire prawn suit in its mouth and deal up to 20% damage before letting it go. If you're fortunate enough to avoid a sea dragon's mouth, you still have to be careful in case it swats you with its arms, as this will still inflict 40 damage to an exposed human or deal 11% damage to the hull of a prawn suit. And even a cyclops is not safe from a sea dragon's attacks, as it can slam its arms with enough power to flip the cyclops upside down or onto its side, dealing 250 damage. But what really cements the sea dragon as Subnautica's biggest threat is its fire breath attack, where the creature eats molten rock and launches it at its prey. This has the ability to deal massive damage to vehicles and exposed humans, and can turn you into a barbecued snack incredibly quickly, dealing 500 damage to a cyclops and up to 19 damage to a prawn suit with each hit taken, with human skin melting like butter and taking up to 72 damage when exposed. Wait, what's that noise? A ghost leviathan seems to have followed us down here. If we're going to survive this ambush, you'll have to watch this video next in order to find out if it really does want to eat you. And special thanks to my patrons, Rowan Thane and Asmodeus.